What's going on guys? Vic to be back with another Game Case Arcades video. On this one today, I couldn't take it anymore. I had to do it. I took the Ultimate Arcade 2 and I put a Pandora's Box 10th Anniversary Edition in it. 100 games, now jumped to 5,000 games. Is it still an Ultimate Arcade though? Let's take a look. Alright guys, you know Joe Fnaf on all the socials. What are you waiting for? Click the link tree down below, save your time, just click it, it shows you everything. Be sure to follow me at at Vic underscore VP. It is the holiday season, so there's always gonna be a lot of posts that I put on my stories. Again, stories from Instagram, I do put them together to TikTok, so in case you do miss it. Majority of the time you'll see it also on TikTok, and then also I am taking advantage of YouTube shorts. Just, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow, and also, be sure to like and subscribe. Probably next year I'll change the animation. But yes, if you are an OG, you already know it. That is always gonna be there. It's always gonna be in the beginning of the videos. Yes, I have to put the social media plug in. There you go. If you're not following me on all the socials, what are you waiting for? Be sure to follow. <laughs> As per usual, I will always have my social media plug in the beginning of the videos. But anyway, back on this, on this one today, it's gonna be also kind of very review on the Pandora's Box 10th anniversary. I have so much to discuss. Uh, I completed this mod yesterday. This mod turned into like a on and off kind of mod. Um, you know, I bought the Pandora's Box. I actually bought it from DIY Retro. Uh, only because they're pretty quick on shipping. And they're probably like the only person that has it in the US. Um, you know, basically I got the box and then I discovered that I need a separate power supply. And then I discovered that whatever box they sent me, it was faulty. So I had to return that. I had to wait for this. It's basically been a lot of on and off. Then we're going to get into the whole trackball part of it. It's been, it's been a journey. But in all honesty, um, you know, I'm going to have some things to say about this cabinet. I can't lie, though. The fact that this has 5,000 games now, this now, definitely on Marketplace, it's getting a lot more traction, a lot more attention. And then for me, personally... I've been playing on this a lot. The CRT, this is just bringing back arcade memories. The CRT on this is gorgeous. Not to mention, again, playing now, you know, it went from 100, in my opinion, it was bullshit games, to now playing 5,000 games. And I would, I would definitely consider it as like your main arcade game bangers are in this now whereas original board it, it just wasn't there now the one big flaw to this mod though is and i'm going to talk about it with this pandora box the trackball trackball does not work i will go and there'll be a part you could always fast forward if you want i'm going to talk about the trackball i'm going to talk about what i did to the trackball to even get it to work which is basically i wired the trackball in sync with the joystick that was just a fucking nightmare it, it wasn't it wasn't at all what you think it was it's it was a nightmare so i basically undid that the best thing about this though i'll be very honest what's very cool especially with how i did this inside of this still has the original board so yes this does have hot swap option capability what does that mean basically right now if i wanted to go back to the original Ultimate RK2 Chicago Gaming, and let's say I wanted to take advantage of the trackball and play Golden Tee, which is really the only trackball game on this, and a bowling game, you could do that. All you simply gotta do is remove the control panel and unplug the JAMA board and then plug in the other JAMA board. And that is it. So as far as, oh no Vic, you destroyed this cabinet? Not really, no. It still has the original hardware in it, and it is a very quick hot swap. So. Basically, this is a two-in-one system. Now, if you haven't seen the video on this cabinet, go back on my videos. You would see basically how I obtained this cabinet. I basically turned it on. I did a quick review on it. All in all, in summary, gorgeous cabinet. I mean, you know, everything from honestly, the side art is pristine. The biggest thing was the inside of this cabinet did not have an ounce. Not even one dust bunny. It wasn't dirty on the inside. It was immaculate. And again, I mentioned in the other video that basically this was just a coat hanger. It was like a coat rack. 
uh, when I went to go pick it up, it was just jackets over it. The guy said, Vic, if you could sell it for me, we'll do a, a split on whatever you make on it. I said, cool. I bought it here. I shot the video. I put it up on Facebook Marketplace. And then sure enough, you get the whole bleh of people that will offer you a hundred bucks. Oh, it's an old cabinet. Oh, it only plays a hundred games. I'll give you 200, pick it up today. I'm shooting all that down. That to me, it, um, it, number one, the guy that gave it to me, he put more, not that he put more money into it, but he bought it for more than that. And I told him, I said, are you looking to quick sell this or are you okay with me sitting on it and we get a good deal? So he goes, Vic, I'm in no rush to sell it. You know, in my eyes and even if it was in that situation, I would never sell a cabinet full size for like a hundred bucks. People are ridiculous. And the biggest thing though on Facebook Marketplace that people were like looking at, they were all like, this only plays a hundred games. Cause I write in the description, I write everything like I truthfully would. But I also did an influx of people that said, hey, does this have Pac-Man? Hey, does this have Galaga? And sure enough, the original board did not have that. So right when I got like the first one or two days, I was like, oh man, people are asking what I normally get on my arcade build is, hey, I want to play Pac-Man. Hey, I want to play Galaga. Hey, I want to play Metal Slug. Hey, does this have Hyper Street Fighter 2? I get all those requests on a daily basis for my arcade cabinets. It's kind of a given that I was going to get that for this. Now, in all honesty, in this situation, I normally get somebody that wants this cabinet and they want the upgrade and then I usually take a payment and I go, okay, I'll upgrade it once I get your payment. That's how I usually do it. But in this scenario, I went and I spent my own money to upgrade this. We're not talking thousands of dollars. I'm probably right now into it. I think it's like 200 bucks is what I'm in. That's basically, I needed to get a new JAMA harness. I needed to get a Pandora box, obviously. And I did need to get a power supply. Later on in the video, I'm going to talk about the challenges slash kind of like the steps that went into this because I originally thought that I could only just get a Pandora's box. I thought maybe I could use the existing Java harness that's in this to power it all in all, long story short, no. Uh, the original Java that's in this, it's actually also wired totally different. Again, I will explain a lot. There's a lot going on here. Now, in all honesty, I also spent my own money on it because again, it's not that big of a deal, but I also spent the money because I said to myself, I said, you know what? This is beautiful. Uh, now, I mean, me having this now, I've probably played about three games. I played Metal Slug, I played Street Fighter, I played Galaga on this, and it is just a visually amazing, it's, it's just visually beautiful. And I keep, I keep mentioning about that with this cabinet, it is because of the CRT. Again, I'm 33 years old, I've been around arcades. I've been around this. I don't think I've ever seen in person, I don't want to be wrong, but as far as a 25 inch CRT, I'm trying to think what cabinet would have a 25 inch, possibly like the Simpsons. Um, you know, it's just visually beautiful. It looks great. And again, it is a CRT on it, but with this Pandora box, I did have also a little bit of a challenge when it came to this Pandora's box. I should say with the CRT and the Pandora box, I had a little bit of a challenge getting the CRT correctly. And it's still, even if you are looking at it at the camera right now, it is still a little bit incorrect, but basically the one challenge I had with this CRT, I don't know what to blame. Um, I don't know CRTs. I'm not the type that's going to tinker around with CRTs because right now this CRT works. It is beautiful. There's no craziness. There's no, you know, flashing again on a camera. You might see like the, wave going up and down in person that doesn't happen that's just basically how the camera is capturing um i'm just the type of person right now this crt is pristine clean i am not going to go and mess around and touch little dials that i don't know that what they are and i'm not going to mess around with it basically what am i getting at the only issue i have with this pandora box the crt is the horizontal size you might see it there Again, you can kind of see here, it just says Pandora 10th B. Basically, I believe it's about a half of an inch on each side that you visually don't see. You could definitely see it in the main menu, but when it comes to like games like Street Fighter, you kind of could notice that, hey, the screen is basically wider. When I, when I did my research, 
and I, I watched a couple YouTube videos. People have this horizontal coil. It looks like almost like a pinball, like solenoid coil for like a flipper. And people are like, it's in the middle of the board and you gotta turn it and you gotta go very gently with it and it'll adjust it. This doesn't have that. This, this, this CRT doesn't have what people are showing. It does have very little tiny dials, but I went, I tried to touch one. It didn't do anything, like visually it didn't do anything. And I basically put my hands up. I said, you know what? I'm not gonna touch it. <laughs> Cause knowing me, it works now. I, I don't wanna go with one thing and poof, it's dead. And now I gotta invest money. Now I, I'm just not the type. So yes, some people right now, you might be visually upset. Oh, I think it doesn't, oh. It works. I'm the type where if it's not broke, don't fix it. But then again, you might be saying, then why'd you put a 5,000 games? It only had 100 games and it's not really that great of 100 games. So, uh, you know, I basically, it does work, but I wanted to fix it a little bit. But all in all, that is the only one downside to this is the horizontal sizing. In the front of the cabinet does have the dials. I could adjust the vertical. The horizontal left and right though, it doesn't really move too much. Um, you know, it's got your basic CRT control board in the front, but what I was looking at online is people like, you have to actually touch something that's in like where the neck is. Uh, and I'm just, I'm not going to touch it. I'm not doing that. Um, if the person that buys this wants it, great. Me personally right now, I, and again, I build these things. This right here is good. I am happy with it. Aside from that width, that's something where I could basically live with it. Cause you really can't notice it. Let's play a couple of games. I'll still talk, but let's say a couple of games so you can see it visually, the width. So what's also cool, I didn't show you, but I'll show you later on the coin button, which again, this is a fake coin door, but the actual plastic, like the coin reject button, there's a button behind it. So I do have it wired up to give a coin. So right now we're in Street Fighter. Awesome. We'll talk about the Pandora box. As you can see though, there is a bunch of Street Fighter 2s just like your regular Pandora boxes are. This again is the official 3A games one. I'll go into the review of this later on, but right now I just wanna show you the width. So right now, like, you know, Pandora box is in the middle, Capcom, look at that. Hyper Street Fighter, the logo is right there, it's edge to edge there. You can kinda of see though, like the credit here, it doesn't say the T and then the zero one. So even up here, you can see the coin. Yeah, I wanna make sure you can see it. Yeah, see like, you can just see CO, so. I'm actually gonna put a coin in, we'll do two players. Inserting a coin on this is a pain in the ass. I don't like how this is, especially with this Pandora box. It's one of the things we'll talk about. Here comes a new challenger. Let's bring you in closer. But you don't need to see the buttons, basically. You don't need to see me doing buttons and all that, so here we go. Again, visually it's okay. I'm missing the J and the A in Japan. The main thing is the health bars, see that? I mean, that's really the only focus is, is would be the health bars. So you can see it turns red. Let's see if I can get a one hand Hadouken in. You can't even see it on it, but uh, yes, let's see. There you go. You can't even see my hand, but yes. All in all, solid stuff using the stock speakers. Again, it is great. To me, again, I, I personally, I just know that the, the horizontal, it's being cut. I feel like somebody that's new, they really wouldn't notice it, but I am the type to be very truthful. So anybody that's gonna pick this up, I will say, hey, just a heads up, the horizontal on the CRT, you cannot, I can't go in more on it. But other than that, it is awesome. It is beautiful. Uh, we'll look real quick. I was playing some Galaga, uh, the search. I don't wanna do a search. I wanna go to recent. Galaga, vertical game on it. Big thing though is that I don't know, like the numbers, I guess you could say, it looks kind of squished, but at least it kept the vertical form. And then you could also do auto fire if you want. That's a pretty cool feature. But yes, you can see player one. Yeah, you can kind of see it. It's just, again, this cabinet originally did not have Galaga. It didn't have a couple of the main bangers that people want to play. And I'm just happy, honestly, with the vertical game. You can see there, it works, and it's not it's not stretched. So they didn't stretch the vertical cabinet on it. Awesome, exit on out. I was playing some uh, uh, Metal Slug. Metal Slug was amazing on this. Just the colors on it. If 
I go to recent uh, Metal Slug, colors on Metal Slug look gorgeous on this CRT. Again, I, I'm going to keep saying it. The CRT is beautiful. This is just how arcades... When you think arcade, that's what you look at. The CRT, it is gorgeous. Mission, oh, start. Look at that. I, where I was, where I was, we had a Neo Geo. It was a, I believe it was a four slot. And when I laid, when this started, I was like, wow, this is how I remember that cabinet. We had a real Neo Geo. Beautiful. Thank you, thank you. Oh, that was dumb. Beautiful though. Again, you can see there, I'm missing the end in the coin. Again, the horizontal stretch on it is the only thing. Take a look real quick. As far as the Pandora box here, that looked good. Usually, even on Raspberry Pi builds, if you don't know how to adjust Raspberry Pis, you have to adjust the speed on that. So when the helicopter comes down, you get very big slowdown. But as you can see, this handled it pretty well. I'm very happy with how that handled it. Awesome. Now, later on, we're gonna talk about the Pandora box itself. If you do notice, the, the, this does have Killer Instinct. That kind of amazed me. I was like, whoa, Killer Instinct. But sure enough, when you do launch it, uh, it is the Super Nintendo version. How can you tell? Number one, that, and then number two, you get that, where basically one credit is five minutes. Um, yeah, we're gonna be talking about that in a few, but again, it's a visual thing. Even this, honestly, this does have like NES and apparently SNES, I haven't really looked too much at it, but even playing retro consoles on a CRT, it does, bring back memories and again the CRT on this is just gorgeous 1994 1995 beautiful Killer instinct. in tribute to retro lizard will be Riptor because he's a lizard <laughs> let's see again using the stock speakers I'm not a Killer Instinct player, so let's see. Oh, yeah. Again, this is also Super Nintendo, I believe. This is an NES. Super I got a triple. I'm right now just button mashing the shit out of this game. I'm dazed. Oh god. Oh my lord. Oh. Oh wow. Yes, but there you go. Killer Instinct. Yes. But it is the Super Nintendo version. Now again, stock here inside of the coin though, there's my button. That, again, everything original is still wired and in place and intact. Nothing was removed or changed. But here you do have the CRT knobs here. So I could adjust, for example, like the brightness as you can see. And again, this has like vertical zinc. You can see that. I could adjust like the vertical height. I had it great basically when it, in game, it's perfect. But as far as the horizontal, See, like that is probably the only thing I get. It's a very, it's very micro. It's very small of a, of a, of a, an adjustment. Whereas my vertical, my vertical has a very big adjustment. But as far as the horizontal, it, it does not. I don't want to go too crazy with this because I did have it perfectly set, but it's okay. You guys are watching. See, there's like your vertical sink. You don't want to mess with that. My left and right. So basically, if I go all the way to the right, I could see here. Again, I say it as you're missing about a good half of an inch on each side. And unfortunately, that is it. Everything normally on a CRT, that control board controls everything. Somebody went, I went into the comment section, people were like, you now need to change like a capacitor or a cap. And I'm like, I'm not doing that. Cause knowing me, I'm gonna fuck it up bad and now the CRT is gonna be a paperweight. I could live with this. And I feel like if I could live with it as a person that plays arcade games, I'm pretty sure others could live with it. Yes, mentally I do notice, but as you can see, it's not that big of a deal. You're gonna see me cut in real quick, but I'm gonna mention about, I'm gonna talk about if you wanted to modify this, and I forgot to mention, what does it take to modify this? If you have this and you were to go to a Pandora box, 
All in all, you will need a new arcade power supply. You will need a arcade power supply. You will need a JAMA harness and you will need a Pandora box. That is basically all I purchased for this. Everything else is stock. Now let's touch up on one thing that I, it's actually funny, somebody like messaged me in the Facebook group and he's like, Vic, there's somebody that's selling this exact cabinet. Do you think I should grab it? I honestly said if this cabinet, it, it, again, the CRT is what I'm trying to really like make a big deal about. I made a big deal about it in the other video, that I, even in this video. This cabinet to me is worth it just because of the CRT. And again, in this specific scenario, I'm going to take you again in the rear. The rear is spotless. I didn't clean the rear. I didn't clean the tube. This, is ne this hasn't been used is what I'm trying to get at. So this person mentioned, hey, Vic, somebody's selling this by me for $1,200. I said that's a little steep. I wouldn't spend $1,200 on this. Me personally, if it was even in this condition, um, stock with the 100 games, I would probably say about 500 max. And some of you may be like, Vic, that's you're ripping people off. No, that's what this cabinet is worth to me. Um, artwork is artwork. Luckily, it's got a, 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 an interesting artwork panel. Um, right now, though, again, the trackball is you know an issue. My biggest challenge, the number one thing when I did want to start modding this was I needed to figure out a way to get the image to the CRT. So this kind of part of the segment is if you wanted to upgrade this, what did I do, what did I need, and also kind of research I did. I've been doing, I've been going back and forth so much just trying to understand and see how to get, let's just say a VGA input, or I should say output, a VGA output to CRT, and it has been a difficult challenge. I couldn't do it. Um, there are boards online that people sell, but it's more about, it's more CRT to VGA, whereas I need VGA to CRT, and then also I don't even think that's the wording. Um, I forgot what the CRT three letters are, because it's not CRT. But that was like the biggest thing. Basically, a lot of people had the option of, let's just say you had an original Pac-Man and you put an LCD in, the LCD accepts VGA. So it's like the board, CRT board, game board to VGA. I needed the opposite. I needed VGA to CRT. Now, somebody made a video on YouTube showing that they actually, ripped, and I have it somewhere here and I tried it. I tried it for a day and I gave up on it. Somebody actually took a VGA cable, because again, the Pandora box has VGA out. He took a VGA cable and he like cut it and there's like, I don't know, 12 wires in it. And I believe this has like six wires. And uh, you know, you put this wire to this one and this one to this one. And sure enough, you might, it, it should work. And in my situation, it did not. I had an image, but it had the vertical sink just flying. And I tried so many different wire combinations. I was also now adjusting and tuning these you know, the knobs and I threw in the towel. I actually had a Pandora box uh, DX. Uh, yeah, a 3000 when I had it on the side and I did that before I bought this. So again, me going with this VGA test, I couldn't do it. Then I look online, somebody was selling like a board that was C VG, it was, again, it was CRT to VGA. And somebody else was selling a very small, tiny board that was like VGA to like a five pin connector. And it's just, it looked different on the inside of this. Basically though, what I'm trying to really get at is that I don't want to spend that much money on it. I think it was like 80 bucks for this little tiny board. And if it doesn't work, I got to return it. And that's okay. It was on Amazon. It's just, there's a lot going on. And there was a lot of like tinkering needed for that. So what did I do? I went and I basically determined I need a Pandora's box that has JAMA. I needed a JAMA Pandora box. Why? Because this original game has a JAMA and the video signal out is a standard JAMA. It's got your RGB uh, ground and then like sync. So it's got like five wires. So I said, okay, this is already running JAMA. So let me just put another JAMA I then went with the new Pandora's box 10th anniversary. There are 
A couple of other ones. I could have done a Pandora Box DX, but the newest one is the 10th anniversary. Why am I going to go for the DX? This now we're going to go into the review part of the Pandora's Box 10th anniversary. Now, I want to start with this review for the Pandora Box 10th anniversary. I'm watching videos online. They talk about like this could apparently do light guns. I'm going to give you the heads up right now. Visually, as I watch the people that have this 10th anniversary one versus the one that I have, it looks like the JAMA version is way different than what other people are showing. Just keep that in mind, okay? My biggest number one reason I bought this Pandora box, number one, I needed a JAMA connection, and number two, I needed something for trackball. I needed something to work with the trackball because this has trackball built into it. Spoiler alert, this does not work with trackball. It doesn't work. Even me, I messaged DIY Retro. He even wrote to me, he goes, yeah, Vic, Pandora Box doesn't do trackball. Apparently, the only Pandora Box that can do trackball is the Pandora Box DX. 3,000 games horizontal. It basically could also switch to vertical. That is apparently the only Pandora Box that could do trackball. So if you are looking for that, there's your number one. I'm getting that info from DIY Retro. I, he did mention though, he said you have to get that box and you also need to get this USB board. That right there alone, the USB board and the Pandora box is $200 alone. And I'm like, I'm, I don't want to spend that. I think that's kind of silly. I don't want to spend that. Uh, you know, I don't, I don't want to deal with it. This isn't my cabinet. You know the back story with this. I basically passed on it and I basically settled for the Pandora box 10th anniversary. Now, the first one I got from DIY Retro, it, for some reason, I couldn't get it to boot. Again, think of it as now me first plugging this thing in. Also, I discovered that I did need a separate power supply. This arcade cabinet originally did not have a power supply like your regular arcade arcades do. Vic, what are you talking about? What power supply? I'll send you a picture right here. There'll be a post right here. I'll show you the rear of the cabinet later on. It does need this power supply just like your regular standard arcade does it needs the 20 uh the 12 volt it needs the 5 volt and such it it needs that standard stock this didn't have it it doesn't have it it basically just has one 24 volt power plug that's it so now i got the first pandora box in i then realized i needed a power supply i now had to wait another day for it i already also bought a new jamma harness with it now, when I got the first Pandora box in, I couldn't get a visual. I don't know why I couldn't get it. The instructions show you how to go through the resolutions. Basically, this has VGA, this does have HDMI, and this does also accept CRT. I'll show you the manual here. The first one I got, I even plugged it into my TV there, and it just didn't show anything. And I'm like, what the hell is going on? I could see lights on the board. It was flashing orange. I, I mean... I'm no stranger to Pandora boxes. I mean, I am new to this one, the official 3A one. Um, but I was just like, this is really, I messaged DIY Retro. They said, Vic, just send it to us. It sounds like you have a bad one. And I had to wait like another four or five days for that. Now I have this one and it worked. I tested it first on the flat screen HDMI and it worked. I brought it to the CRT. I changed resolutions and luckily it worked. So again, you'll see LEDs and all that. For this Pandora box, again, I needed it for the CRT. I had to go for the JAMA board and luckily it worked. We're, we're here now. Now, if you know me, I usually do the knockoff Pandora box. I have mine, which is the main two player one, which is 8,000 games. This now is the official 3A. So if you don't know Pandora boxes, there are knockoff ones. And then the official Pandora box company is 3A. So this is the official one. Again, the first thing I did, I wanted to make sure it worked. I said, awesome. I connected my JAMA. This is some Ultimate Mortal Kombat. I connected my JAMA board, and uh, my JAMA board. I connected my, I yeah, the JAMA wires. I wired it up. I was able to play some two player action. I did Street Fighter, I did Galaga. I said, cool, awesome. Let's now go into the trackball. Now this trackball that's stock here, this is like an original HAP. Yeah, it's a HAP trackball. This has, a Molex connector. This doesn't work as USB. 
It is a standard Molex connector, almost like original arcade hardware, we should say. It's a Molex connector. There's no USB to it. Pandora box though does need a USB. So I didn't have a USB trackball handy. I actually ran real quick to Micro Center. They had a trackball dirt cheap for 20 bucks. Even before though I went to buy the trackball, I said, okay, this should read as a mouse. Let me just plug the mouse in. And what I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna actually do it now, I'm gonna remove the deck. Let me show you what that shows on the screen when I plug this mouse in. So I got my mouse plugged in, I got the control panel up. Let me just go into this. And basically if I start using the mouse, you might hopefully see that there. I have a big ass cursor on the screen. This cursor does nothing of value, nothing at all. I can't, I mean, again, it's a mouse. I can't do anything but see a giant cursor on the screen. I want to make sure you can see that. Yes, you can. It is a giant cursor. That is all it does. I don't understand why. Again, the packaging on this, it says it could do trackball games. Apparently, this also could do light gun games. Spoiler alert. Again, I'm going to speak for the JAMA version. There are no light gun games on this. And I'm also going to mention later on about connecting to Wi-Fi which apparently is a waste of time. There's no point of connecting to Wi-Fi on this because there's no marketplace on this. But as you can see, again, before I went to Micro Center and got the trackball, I was like, a trackball is like a mouse. I should be able to control the game with the mouse. And as you can see, I just have a giant, it's not even a mini, it's, it's a huge, it's a huge <laughs> cursor. Now, just for shits and giggles, I will exit out and I will run a game that I really wanted to play, which was Centipede. That's, to me, a classic game. Let's go ahead and we're gonna try to look for a Centipede. So C, E, N, T. I wanna play Centipede, button one, not start. And as you can see, even in the menu, I have this big cursor. I am now using the mouse. The mouse is here, I don't wanna put it on the glass, I'm using my leg. But we visually could see the mouse is there. If I press start, I can't do anything, nothing. I could move the joystick though, I could fire, but as far as the mouse, it's just this giant cursor, makes no sense at all. So even me seeing that cursor, I still went to Micro Center, I still got the trackball, I have it over there. It, Micro Center is liquidating all their arcade stuff, so it was a $20 trackball, uh, so I have it over there. Uh, it didn't work. I bought it here and I was like, that was dumb of me to just waste my gas and get a trackball that I don't need. but. It didn't work. So now I messaged DIY Retro and I'm like, this doesn't do trackball. And that's where he told me, yeah, Vic, this doesn't do trackball. The only one that does trackball is the Pandora DX with the USB board. And they even wrote that it's not worth it because of the very small amount of games. I was also amazed and shocked that this Pandora box, before I bought it, I looked at the game list, this Pandora box has Capcom Bowling. And I mentioned in my, my past videos, I've also streamed Capcom Bowling, because my kiddo loves it. I was like, oh man, this is gonna be awesome. This is gonna have Capcom Bowling. It's gonna have also a trackball. And again, the trackball doesn't work. I mean, again, this isn't wired, but even with the mouse, doesn't do anything. So now Capcom Bowling, it's utilizing the, tr the joystick. It's a whole different feel. It doesn't, it feels naughty to play like this. It kind of sucks to play like this. So I was like, wow, you know, this has quite a lot of trackball games but there's no point if the trackball doesn't work now i moved you back there because i'm going to basically show you a snippet i went to the extent because i said to myself I, said, I gotta get this to work i gotta get trackball to work i actually went in and again this is connected via molex i went in i took a little bit of sheathing off the wires and i basically connected the trackball to the joystick I thought it was gonna work, and no, don't waste your time. It is awful. I will show you the short here. <laughs> Guys, second update real quick. Spent an hour wiring up the trackball to the joystick and does not work. This doesn't work. This is not what a trackball should be. Again, I basically have this wired as a joystick. So again, a system like this, it should be like, it goes zero to 100. Trackball like a mouse, you can even see it's not even right. Um, again, Pandora Box, 10th anniversary, doing a little bit more research, it is confirmed. You cannot do a trackball with this Pandora Box. Apparently the only one is the Pandora Box DX that has the vertical to horizontal flip, so it's 3,000 games plus like, I don't know, 400 vertical. 
uh, according to DIY Retro, that is the only one that could do a track wall. Pandora Box 10th Anniversary, I will keep this in here because honestly, it's great. It's 5,000 games. 100 games to 5,000 games, I'll keep the Pandora Box 10th Anniversary, but the trackball. And as you can see in that short, it just doesn't work like it would or it should. Basically, it was taking it as like sending joystick inputs is 0 to 100. That micro switch, it goes 0, it's off, and then on 100. Whereas like trackball is like very delicate and all that. You can't do it that way. Uh, all in all, highly disappointed that there is zero. It's, as far as the JAMA board version of this, it doesn't do trackball, it doesn't do USBs or anything like that. Now, I right now, I'm gonna go in and I'm going to show you real quick the options slash uh, service menu on this. I did log in to the Wi-Fi. Why? I don't know. There is absolutely no reason to lock in. Now again, bring you in closer here, you could just kind of see the menu. I could go here, I could see my buttons and I could configure and do my testing and all that. Awesome stuff, I have the exit button here. Awesome. But, uh, let's go back. The biggest thing is that this does have Wi-Fi config. I don't want to go into it because I'll show you my home network, but basically you connect and nothing else happens after that. There is no, there's no like market place to download games or anything connecting to wi-fi with this is pointless there is no point of it i could i could do my favorite list i could edit the game list i have all 5036 games showing other than that there's legitimately no reason to connect to wi-fi there's no reason nothing i, I don't understand my bootleg pandora box is it has a marketplace and it's got like you could download this and you, this has nothing. And there you go. There's your big ass mouse cursor for absolutely zero reason. Now, what's really funny, I'm not going to do it. I actually plugged in a keyboard. And if you actually hit the print screen button on the keyboard, it takes a picture. And then that's it. It just like stays there. <laughs> I, don't, I don't understand why. But yeah, there's your uh, menu here. Again, JAMA version. There's no, there's, there's nothing here. I can't do it. There's no point of connecting to the Wi-Fi on it. I then went in and I was like, oh, this apparently could do light gun games. So maybe I could search up some Carnival. Maybe I could search up some Area 51. And uh, spoiler alert, so I don't waste your time. There is no Area 51. There's Area 88. But there is no... I need to put a coin in to navigate. There is no Area 51. So Java Board has absolutely no light gun games. Zero. I mean, that's really all I could say. Uh, that's all I could say. Uh, <laughs> this does have, and it's very funny, yes, just like all other Pandora boxes, this does have about 30 different versions of Street Fighter 2 Champion Edition. Uh, it does have a bunch of hyper Street Fighters, a bunch of King of Fighters. So, uh, look at this, I'm, I'm on a list of King of Fighters 97. There's two, 90, there's two pages of 97, two pages of 98, about a page and a half of 99. So you're probably at like, let's just call it to be safe. I would probably say you're at about 4,500 games instead of 5,000. Um, but all in all, it's from what I usually get my request, it does have Killer Instinct, but again, it is the Super Nintendo version. This does not have NBA Jam arcade version it has the super nintendo version which is just so i don't like it i don't understand it <laughs> but all in all brutal honest opinion on this it does the job it does what i needed it to do i needed a jama board which connects to a crt and as you can see it's beautiful it's great so it does what it needs to do i went from 100 games to 5,000 games it doesn't have every single game it doesn't have nfl blitz it doesn't have NBA Jam arcade versions, but it's got the main bangers on it, which is most likely, honestly, the most important thing. I played Simpsons on this and it just bought back memories. It bought back the memory of me playing Simpsons at Atlantic City while my parents were at the casino and I pumped fucking quarters into Simpsons. It, it does the job. Minus the trackball, minus the light gun. I cannot speak for the family version, which is most likely what people are posting online. This JAMA board version, there is no point of connecting to Wi-Fi. 
There's no point and it's not usable to put a trackball on it. And this huge giant mouse cursor is just nothing. <laughs> now again, this right now, beautiful. This is probably the only solution I would have if somebody had a CRT and wanted more games. Again, this Pandora 10th anniversary box, Pandora box 10th anniversary. This is the current one and it's got the most games that any other Pandora box JAMA version has. So again, it works for what it is, going from 100 games to now 5,000 or 4,500 games. It's amazing. Now, I'm the only one downside, but it's not the Pandora box issue, it's my CRT. The Pandora box outputs a four by three and the, res the, 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 the numbers on it is 384 by 224. I just have a feeling that my screen is not that number. <laughs> you know, there's, there's 1920 by 1080p, there's, you know, 1270 by 10, whatever it is, 720 or whatever. Um, I just feel like that's my issue with the screen. But again, that's not a, that's not a Pandora box issue. All in all, it's, it's great. And I now, like I'll be doing work and I'll turn this on real quick just to get a quick game in. Um, it's great. It's a bulky cabinet though. That's my only big thing about this cabinet. It is bulky. I do have it up for sale right now on Marketplace. Um, I love it, but I just know for a fact, and this is just how CRTs are, um, you know, somebody just messaged me and was like, why don't you remove the CRT and put an LCD? And I was like, I'm not doing that because the CRT works. And then you have to pay me more to do that. But the CRT works. I'm not here to destroy something that works. And again, the biggest point, the biggest selling point on this cabinet itself is that CRT. It is just, it's a thing of beauty. And no matter how many scan lines you put on MAME and uh, your front ends, you will never get the same look as a CRT. Now that's my basic review on the Pandora box. It does what I needed it to do. It works with CRT screens. Yes, I have this horizontal issue, but that's really on my end slash the CRT. I'm happy with it. Honestly, I think it's great. A beginner setup. I could most definitely bring this to a business if they wanted to do for free play because the coin door on this is false, the fake coin door. But, you know, somebody for home use that needs something very easy, user friendly, the Pandora box is the way to go. Now, I put you there because I want to show you the way this is really, and you saw it before, there's basically a button here. And the button is perfectly lined up with the plastic on the coin reject and it takes the coin and now I can pick a game. It is just loads, it's, it's great. That's a nice little kind of touch. Um, I'll load up some TMNT. And again, as you can see, yes, the screen, it's a little bit too far. I can't totally see the whole thing, but real quick, there's a lot of Ninja Turtles, Jesus Christ. I didn't even look up Ninja Turtles. You have, you have three pages of Ninja Turtles. Now granted, yes, there is, um, what is this? This is like a Streets of Rage mod. <laughs> I love it, Teenage Mutant Hero Turtles. Uh, usually there's, this, this has the four player one. So let's load up this and I'm gonna do real quick on camera. We'll look at the, um, it looks like a Streets of Rage mod, but let me bring you closer. Now this is the four player version it looks like. It is the actual arcade version. I didn't test controllers. I should actually do that before I do anything. Um, I should probably do that. But just look at, look at the screen. My only downside though now is to put in player two. It's, I don't wanna say it's a process. I have to press the exit and then I have to actually insert coin. Oh, and it actually only inserts it for player one. So there's your four player issue right there. Um, that sucks. There's your, f so we're doing it live. I'm not able to put in two players. Let's exit out real quick. Oh, that sucks. I can't even put multiple coins in. Oh, this is just another fucking downside to it. I'm gonna have to now see if there's this two player version of TMNT, which I'm pretty sure there is because it's a shitload of TMNTs. Oh, that's, that's ass. That is ass. Hang on, April. No. Damn, I'm doing this live on camera. I don't want to edit this part out. Let's just take a look real quick at the other TMNTs. 
That's another thing, when you exit the game, it brings you back. Ah! Uh, so, let's do this, the first one. I don't know if it's gonna load up an SNES version, I don't know if it's gonna do an, let's see what it is. But the last one was like a Streets of Rage mod. Okay, all right, all right. Now again though, see like I have multiple coins in, but you have to go here, into the coin. So, put my coin in. Hang on, April. Hang on, April. Okay, cool, awesome. I mean, that's something now where you would edit the game list, but just look at the visual on it. It is amazing. And again, that's not that's not a filter. Awesome, beautiful. Let's just do for kicks real quick because I have you there. Let us do, and again, you could, oh, I have to now go through it again. <laughs> again, you would definitely want to, you know, go in. You could edit the game list, luckily. I just want to see this. Oh, look at that. What was that? Wow, so there's like the... There was another one that looked like Streets of Rage. Look at that. Oh, a tournament. Oh, a tournament fighter. That's cool. It has that. All right, this one though. Streets of Rage 2, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. Let's see this. So... Right now, we can already see four player most likely will not work correctly. I can already tell you that. Maybe if I set it to free play, I'll do that real quick live so you can see that. This is the Genesis or the Streets of Rage 2. And again, console game, it's basically, you could just, uh, it's basically timed. That's a first. I don't think I've ever seen that on a Pandora box. Oh, I don't want to get copyrighted for it. Look at that. <laughs> okay, listen, that's cool. That's that's cool. I, I, I've, I'm never a fan of that, but this is cool. <laughs> wow, this is cool. All right, again, because only because of the music. Awesome, that was, that was a nice little pleaser to see that. That's awesome. Now, just, I didn't even, I was going to cut the camera, but look at how many there are. There's so many versions of Street, Streets of Rage 2, Street Fighter. Well, <laughs> but now there's multiple Street Fighters. Why? What is this? Girls? Girls Paradise. Wow. Hot. Streets of Rage. Hot. <laughs> Streets of Rage 2 CN. Uh, you could basically also go here. They have it like an order. Uh, by Even by the, the emulator. So main, PlayStation 1, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Mega Drive. Game Boy, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, MSX, Ataris, and Lynx. So, uh, it was most likely then the Mega Drive. That's where that, that was. That's kind of cool. I didn't expect that. So, if you are actually looking for, like, I guess ROM hacks, it's probably there. In this situation, always look up a manual and try to get an exact game list because I'm not going to show it or have it. All right, real quick, we're going to test this out. I set it to four play. Let's run TMNT again. And let us see now, can I get action on players one and two? Hopefully I should. If it's like my other Pandora box DX, it might do it. It did. It did. So setting it to free play, I do have my two players. Awesome. So if you're doing coin mode, four player does not work. Let's run it real quick with like the Simpsons. Um, it's got quite a few, but real quick, again, you could go to the option menu, you could go to four player. There is a bunch of Cadillac and dinosaurs. Um, I want to do Knights of the Valor. There's quite a few there. Uh, why? I don't know. Battletoads. I just want to do real quick the Simpsons. So again, this is another example. Pandora box cannot be set to coin play if you want four players. I had that issue with my DX. I just want to make sure that the audio doesn't... Inserting coins. That's the start. So start is also the coin. Yes, so we have two players. Awesome. Look at the Simpsons on this. Look at the screen. I love this. I am fucking nerding out just for the Simpsons on a CRT. This is amazing. Awesome. It is beautiful. Awesome. So, at least we can see that proof on camera. Four player, you cannot do coin mode. I'm going to probably try to compare this to, um, 
My DX, apparently there's 10 pages. 10 pages of four player games. So, you got 100 games. Right? Two, four, six. Yep, you got a hundred four player games. Granted though, you got two, you got nine versions of Cadillac and Dinosaurs. And you got ten. You got like 18 versions of Knights of Valor. But then again, there's Knights of Valor 1 and Knights of Valor 2. So take that as you would. Again, living proof. You needed to be set to four player uh free play for four player. Man. This CRT, you have no idea. I'm just nerding out. It is gorgeous. It's gorgeous. It is gorgeous. Gorgeous. Let's see. So. Yep. So I'm very sure, and it does have two USB ports. So if I put two wired controllers in, or I would assume you could put two uh, arcade USB encoders, you will have your four player setup. Awesome. Done. Done. Pandora box review. Done. Awesome. That right now we're I'm doing this live too, and it's just great, you know, kind of uncovering stuff. But as you can see, that CRT is gorgeous. Now, real quick, this is probably the best part of this cabinet. Wiring is wiring. Now you have technically two JAMA harnesses in this. But basically, on the right I have the Pandora box, and then on the left I have the original JAMA that came with the system. Let me see if you can see it. Cool, so now you can see here again, original JAMA here, and now the new Pandora box, your wiring is your wiring. Basically, if you look very carefully at each of the ends here, there's now two wires going to the input. So there's two wires on this down micro switch. Basically, again, I had to merge two JAMAs together. Now, normally I would do this powered off, uh, and you know what, I will. I'm gonna power off the system, and I just wanna show you the process, which is very simple, if you wanted to swap from the Pandora box. So basically right now, I'm gonna remove the JAMA, just like that, you kinda of get the end of it. I removed the JAMA from the Pandora, and now I'm gonna plug in the original JAMA to the Chicago Gaming Company. Chicago Gaming Arcade JAMA, right there, done. If I flip the switch, now we are back to normal as far as having the Chicago game. I wanna make sure you can see the screen when it boots up. Boom, there you go. I didn't do anything as far as the screen. That is it. So now if you wanted the original Chicago gaming thing, it is there and awesome. It's very, it's just great, honestly. That's gonna boot up like it normally does. It takes maybe, I don't know, 10 to 15 seconds to do. It's just also because it is, as you can see, a hot swap. So if you wanted to go back and enjoy the original classic, mainly this trackball here, and as you can see, the trackball still works even though I try to modify it. Uh, so if you wanted to play some Golden Tee, some Golden Tee Golf 2, press player one start. This is just a, I don't like this version of Golden Tee. Basically the only thing maybe is you go into Coinder and up the brightness, but other than that, this is solid. And again, it's a very quick swap. That's all it is. I might as well launch this ball into space. And I cleaned the trackball from that. I didn't get a full back on that, but yes, everything works as it should. So if I go to exit game, done. That's it. So anybody that wants this cabinet goes, oh, you destroyed it. It's still there. The original stuff is still there and still intact. Awesome. Now, I've already gotten some people messaging me and saying, hey Vic, how can I do this to mine? I already have one. Later on, for Joel, I will do this. I didn't test this. There are apparently a couple of like on games, like who done it. Uh, he asked me, why is that on this? So I'll do that. But I do want to go into service so you don't hear anything. Basically, let me tell you like, let me go step by step on what I did, right? Because when I first originally opened this, there is a JAMA board in this. It's not a regular arcade JAMA board. It's definitely exclusive made from this company, but there is a JAMA connection here. I then, and I just bought a Pandora box JAMA. I needed a Pandora JAMA. Yes, I had the DX on hand, and then that's where I tested the VGA. After that couple of hours, I basically said, let me just get a Pandora box uh, JAMA. Basically, once I got that Pandora box, I thought it was gonna be an easy swap. 
basically just, you know, unplug the drama and put it into Pandora box. And sadly, no, it wasn't that easy. Upon looking very closely at the JAMA, the stock JAMA, there's actually wires missing from the JAMA harness, mostly the five volt. It doesn't have five volt in. I then had to go ahead and buy a arcade power supply, which is in the rear of this cabinet. I said, okay, that's not a problem. Also, I had to buy another JAMA harness. I like this kind of setup because as you saw in the video, I basically unplugged this JAMA and then plugged that one in. Very easy. Originally, I was going to do it where like, you know, I had some slack and you take the JAMA and then put it here. And then if you want to swap, I'm kind of glad it didn't work out that way. Plus, it couldn't work that way. Next step, I said to myself, I said, the first JAMA here, it's already wired for two players. Should be already easy, very simple. That's where I was kind of hoping the hot swap. Basically, when I got the new JAMA, all I simply did was tie in to like these connections here. That's, that's all I would do is basically, you know, I took the head off. And now instead of one wire, there's two wires going here. Ground, basically just needed one ground from my new JAMA. And now all the, the grounds are there. Awesome. What was kind of crazy though in the process is as I did the test on the new Pandora, very odd, I was like, I was, I was mind boggled. But basically what I'm getting at is that the original JAMA harness, it's kind of wired in a certain way. When I would press either button one, uh, button five, player one, or button six, these two buttons here, it actually activated player two, button five, six, and also the exit. So I'm like, what the hell is going on? It was, it was so crazy. Then if I actually just did button five alone, it activated all three. And I'm like, what the f is going on? I was like, I, 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 anyway, long story short, those connections now, I have basically two micro clips here that you would actually have to swap out. So right now on the Chicago gaming, I don't have these two in. So buttons five and six, you just have to pull this head out and then put this head in. Same thing with player two. So what am I getting at? I have this hot swap. It does work out great. All you really got to do is again, plug in the JAMA and then swap out these two. Don't know why or how, but as you can see, uh, this company did not really use standard arcade jammas or whatever it is. It's very unique. It's kind of crazy. And then upon inspection on their jamma, it's kind of like that. We're basically like this what this one here. It's like wired together. It's kind of wild. I, and I know my jamma harnesses. I, I've done it. But all in all, it works. That is the main thing that this works. So again, if you wanted to swap in and out. Really, I feel like the only reason you would swap to the Ultimate Arcade is to play the trackball game. Which again, as you can see, it is this world-class bowling and the um, Golden Tee. It's kind of upsets me because the Pandora box has Golden Tee, but you can't do it with the trackball. Now, just for my buddy Joel real quick, we're going to run Who Done It. Who Done It is... Um, uh, it says that you could control it with the trackball. Who Done It is... Technically a light gun game. He also told me Cheyenne. Cheyenne is also a light gun game. So let's just see how this goes live on camera. I have not done here. Look at that. See that? Shoot here. So yeah. It is a light gun game utilizing the trackball. So for my buddy Joel, Retro Lizard, I will send you a video on this. Uh, this is brutal. This is rough. Oh shit. <laughs> uh, yeah, no, this is not enjoyable. It says enter. Impossible. What am I supposed to do? <laughs> Find the key to enter the attic. Where is the key? Okay, alright, I see that. I got that. Well, this doesn't accept joysticks. Oh, the guy was gonna hit me. No! What's happening? <laughs> Where's this key at? Ah, I mean, it's not that bad. Once you get the hang of it. It's, it's not a light gun, that's for sure. Oh my god, this guy's gonna throw a knife right at me. Ah! Okay, next. Last one he wanted me to also check was, I think it was, uh... 
Cheyenne, Cheyenne, however you pronounce it. I think that was on here, yep. But yes, all in all, like I guess for this too, a game like this, using the trackball is where it's at, and uh, yeah. Honestly, if you're gonna play like Street Fighter, I would play it on the Pandora box, because you have more selections as far as um, Street Fighter. Choose a gang. Look at that crosshair. Oh, I saw this guy. No. Oh shit. <laughs> Did you see how we backflips? What's the plan here? What is the plan here? Oh. You want to talk about precision? I'm dead. I'm dead, right? That's going to hit me and I'm dead. Oh, it didn't hit me. Good. No, it's going to hit me. Can I shoot the bullet in midair? No. Anyway, there you go. <laughs> awesome. All right, now before the video ends, I will want to revert this back to the Pandora box. I usually like to do this with the machine off, but as you can see, I'm going to basically unplug one JAMA, plug in the second JAMA, and call it a day. Uh, I will actually, real quick, I'll try to see if this has this Cheyenne game. Uh, again, you know, it's great. I, I love how it is, and luckily with me, I did keep the original hardware still intact. So, you know, for the people that are going, ah, you butchered this cabinet, and it's still all originally there. <laughs> Everything is there from the original JAMA harness to the original power. It's all got the serial numbers and everything. Nothing was removed. Basically all the new add-on stuff is just on the right side and it works out. I think it's awesome. I right now, like I said, I have this up for sale. If it doesn't move, I am more than happy to keep it slash hold it. Um, it's great. Not too much I have to open it up and I have to remove the free play. But right now, real quick, let's just see if I can find this Cheyenne game. Some people in the comments are like, you're not pronouncing it right. I'm like, all right, I'm sorry. Let's just see. I think there was a Y. Uh, if there was a Y, I don't see it. <laughs> Cheese. No. So there's no Cheyenne. Uh, let's try who done it. Oops. A little too sensitive on that. Who? Nope. Ah. Let's take a look real quick at who done it. There is. Oh, there is a who done it. Let's run it. <laughs> Again, as you can see there, with this kind of lettering on the right side, I can't really see where the backspace is. Oh, man. There you go. It uses the joystick. Probably this game probably is a better advantage of using the joystick than using the trackball. So at least I could fly here. But yeah, let's just see how this goes real quick. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. That's my coin, basically. All right, let's see. It's brutal. <laughs> it is brutal. It is precision and accuracy is not going to be met with this, this trackball, with this joystick. I, right now, just trying to hit the gargoyle. Nope. Nope. It is not happening. Well, there you guys have it. The Ultimate RK2 Chicago Gaming Company converted to a 5,000 plus game Pandora box 10th anniversary. That's CRT, man. It is beautiful. Love it.